Thank you so much for joining. This is Mochi, Gemma, and of course, Isabella, the pop queen. Hi. Um, we're so excited uh, to be doing this uh, live book signing. And we, were, we are so, so lucky that Isabella was willing to share her time with us. And we love to have her here. So yay. Let's get started. Do you want to tell us maybe why you decided to write the book? Just introduce the book and the project. Yeah, definitely. So this book is very special to me because this is our first book. It has, um, it's a compilation of our favorite stories. And then this book, um, and it has a, a chapter for one of the fan favorite, which is Ben and Mochi. And it also has stickers. So we put a lot of love and effort to it. And it's, it's very special to us. And there's so many things that are, I mean, it's the best representation of mochi. So it's, it's very important to me because, I mean, as you guys know, I love mochi. And this is my Taj Mahal to him, like my love letter. And it, I think it, shows Mochi as a character in his whole, whole and of course it represents all packs and not only packs also all the dogs that are very sassy and have a lot of personality <laughs> totally one of the things i noticed that the book is so relatable bart and i started reading through and we were cracking up because so many things are mochi but every pug person will relate and crack up because it's true so it makes us love him more but it also makes us appreciate our own pugs and their quirky characters. <laughs> Definitely, thank you so much. All right, so I think how this is going to go is Gemma is going to be signing the books for all of you guys who purchased the copy. Thank you so much for supporting this artist, <laughs> pug mom, chin mom, and now a new newborn baby mom. Yeah. So. <laughs> And um, while she's doing that, I will ask her the questions that you guys submitted and we can have a discussion going. You guys asked some really good questions. I'm very curious about some of the answers. And uh, just so everybody knows, if the baby starts crying, it may happen. And if pugs start barking, it may happen. So excuse us, we're just gonna roll with the punches here. <laughs> yes, thank you. Full disclosure, uh, yellow is under the table and I'm rocking her. So anything can happen. Too, I saw yellow go under the table. <laughs> Literally under the table. She's so yeah. <laughs> let's, let's hope she has a good nap while mommy does the signing. All right, yeah. so let's get started. So Alexandria from Limington, Maine wants to know, hi Gemma and Mochi. Have you ever thought about getting Mochi a pug brother or sister? Yes, definitely. I've thought of that and I don't want to. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I really um I really wanna. It everything went through my mind. Like I'm so obsessed with Mochi that I thought like I should clone him. No, I should breed him. You know all these things. But honestly, um, what I wanna do is spend as much time I have with him and only him and focus only on my baby. And I feel like having two packs would be too much for me. Like. I only want this pack. This is the only one I want and it. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to spread your love too thin because now, <laughs> now you have a baby. So that would be a lot. It's a lot already. Yeah. Actually, somebody else did ask if you would breed mochi. So I think you answered two questions right here. Yeah. That's great. All right. Hi, Gemma. What was your favorite part about putting the book together? And how long did it take? Me and my pugs love you, Mochi, Yellow, the Twinchies, and Pelly, of course. Much love, from Maria from Wisconsin. Hi, thank you, Maria. So, um, it took part. forever. Like uh, the book, I, I can tell you, like maybe four years or so. So it really took forever. This wow. is, yeah, it's a long project. And my favorite part was choosing the um, all the comics and then all the extra content. Like I had so much fun with that. So yeah. And also so like just reviewing the comics, like it's, it's I, there are so many comics that I even forget. And then I see them and I'm like, oh yeah, I love that. So. Mm -hmm. 
Did you create new content for the book as well? Or was yeah. it just, yeah, you did. Okay, so you combined. Yeah. Awesome, so four years. Yeah. That's, nice. yeah. that's the labor of love, that's amazing. Well, Definitely. thank you. Okay, this is a tricky question. What is your favorite Instagram page? Uh, Other than your own and why? And this is from Kristen in Colorado. Um, her Instagram page is at Korg Pug. I'm guessing she has a Corgi Pug mix. So what are some of your favorite Instagram pages? Well, I love the Pat Queen, of course. <laughs> she does all the great work she does. And I admire a lot, so I really appreciate it. I love, oh my God, I love um, Mr. Biggie, of course. He's super cute pack. I love pack right shotgun, I know. I'm so obsessed with Pini, like, uh, it's since the very beginning, like it's one of the first uh, pack pages I ever follow. And I just can't get enough of him. Like I find him so cute and hilarious. I love uh, Tom, the Tom Cut show, of course. And I love Evie and Eugenia. It's a, a one that I, um, I, I discovered not long ago and it's a black pack. She's a senior pack from Russia and she's so, so adorable and hilarious. Like everyone should follow her, like it's amazing. And also Stella, Stella, it's Stella the pack, something like that. She's a pack. She unfortunately passed away. She was super cute. And now they have another pack named Rescue, also a senior. And she's, a, I mean, I'm obsessed with senior packs. Like, pack puppies are adorable, but give me a senior pack and I die. Like, they are so, super, super adorable. So, there are all these people that are adopting senior packs, and I'm all for it. And I love seeing them. So, I follow. Yeah. Yeah. Senior and I'm forgetting a lot of them. I a lot of pages. I also love Sophie Gaman, my friend who does um, works with pit bulls mostly, mostly and she's an artist. So yeah, a lot of pages, yeah. Amazing. Yes, I love senior pugs too. Their little gray faces are so, oh, I just want to squeeze them. Yeah. All right, from Sally Cabbage Tree Creek in Australia. Here's the question from Australia. Um, good day, Gemma. <laughs> I have been wondering what the meaning is of 157, 157. Thank you so much for sharing not only Mochi, but your wonderful artwork with us. It always makes my day to see a new Mochi comic. Love from Australia. Oh, thank you. Well, such a good question because everyone asks this. And I wish I had a very smart answer and it, that I'm... <laughs> Here's the disappointment. Before I started Mochi's comic, I was doing a comic about my life. So before Mochi arrived, then Mochi arrived in my life and he took over the comic, my life and everything. But <laughs> before that, the comic exists. And I wanted to use something that was very um, iconic of me, if you will. And that's my height because I'm very short. So 157 is my height in centimeters. Oh my God, that's so funny. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not inches. It's got to be centimeters. No, definitely not inches, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, that's so cool. What an interesting tidbit. I had no idea either. It's five feet two. Five feet two, all right. Oh, yeah. All right, Jordi. Not much. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so 157 is Gemma's tied in centimeters. Good to know. All right, Heather from Nebraska would like to know, what has been your favorite comic that you have drawn? What story has been your favorite? Ah, uh, honestly, this is so difficult because it's like choosing, it's harder than choosing which is my favorite child, which is this one. So <laughs> the comic <laughs> is, um, I would say maybe, honestly, the first one that always comes to mind is the one that a burglar entered the house and Mochi is like super welcoming, like, hi, my name is Mochi. And the burglar is like, uh, okay. And he says, do you know where the valuables are? And Mochi is like, yeah, of course. And he drives him uh, to, the, to the fridge. So I think that's what Mochi would do if someone ever breaks in the house. So I like that. <laughs> that's very cute. Of course, Pugs know where the fridge is. That's very good. Awesome. All right. Uh, this is from Nikki. Actually, oops, sorry, did I skip? No, here we go. Nikki from Park Hills, Missouri. 
you are so relatable and genuine. Yeah. What helps you keep, what helps keep you so grounded? And congratulations on the English cover. It's been a long time coming. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, honestly, um, I feel like because my work is about daily life, so it's it comes very easy to me and it comes very easy to stay real because like, this is like <laughs> I wish Yellow was sleeping right now. I wish I wasn't rocking her with my foot. But you know, <laughs> life is how it is. And we never like when we post pictures, videos, whatever, you can you can see the messy house, the messy everything, the hair everywhere. But it's it's we keep it real. It's I mean it's easier for us, it's less work. Like I couldn't I couldn't imagine to make the effort to pretend I have a perfect life, which I, I feel my life is perfect, but it's messy. But yeah, I, feel, I, I see these Instagrams of people, beautiful people with beautiful everything. And they're like, oh my God, where do they get the energy to even take the photo, you know, to look nice for the photo? Like I just can't, but yeah, that's mo mostly laziness, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I hear you. It's uh, once in a while when I get a chance to dress up, I'm like, oh, Bart, let's take a photo because yeah. Like there's, yeah, it's, it's, it's rare, but yeah. your life is perfect just the way it is. And I think obviously your fans appreciate that keeping yeah. it real and keeping it honest because keeping the expectations even for everybody. So that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Veronica from Florida wants to know if Mochi loved yellow immediately or if there's any jealousy at all. Honestly, it's been, it's been amazing because I, I was very worried, like I actually wrote an essay, if you will, um, for my patrons and I told them like all the story and I was very, very scared that Mochi would be jealous and that would actually break my heart. Like I really wanted Mochi to be happy and of course the Twinsies, but the Twinsies, I know they would be happy, especially if Yugi. But I, if my relationship to Mochi would have changed, that would have actually break my heart. So I was very anxious and when Mochi saw her, he was he smelled her and he was like, oh yeah. He's like he knew her. And the my vet and the, their trainer told us, well, my vet, their vet and their trainer told us that they can hear the heartbeat and they can smell the baby through the skin, like through your belly. So I feel like they knew, like I think Mochi feels like he's part of me. So he is it's not that he's crazy about her or he hates her, he just doesn't care about her. It's like I'm with her and he's with me. And if I I go to the kitchen, well, the kitchen is a bad example, but if I go somewhere yeah. else, Mochi will come with me. But if, I, if I'm with Yellow, he will come with Yellow. But he's, um, what amazed me, what really amazed me, and this is 100% true, like Mochi uh, warns me when Yellow cries, he is like, he cries, like he warns me and then he goes to where we feed her. So he just sits there and waits and he has woken up with us to every feeding, to every diaper change. So he's been part of the whole process. And I make sure to, to take time for him. So I, my postpartum was a bit rough. So the first few days I couldn't walk at all. So, I mean, I could walk, but it was, I was very weak. And so I couldn't walk then. But as soon as I was able to, I, I walk Mochi alone. And now we go the three of us and then we walk all together. I don't walk the four of them alone. That, I'm scared of that. But <laughs> usually it's the three of us and then all of us. So, and, and it's very important to me to spend one-on-one -on -one time with him too. Yeah, I think that's really special. That's sweet that he um, gets up for all the feedings and diaper changes. Yeah. I'm so involved, but pugs are such companion dogs. They always want to participate no matter what it is, you know? Yeah. They're constantly under my feet too. I'm like, hey guys, nothing exciting here. Exactly. Oh, is yellow, is yellow me? He's okay. He's just going to join. He's going to uh, It's, it's okay. <laughs> because okay. he was about to start crying. Oh, <sighs> wonderful. I think everyone appreciates this special treat special visitor yeah mochi you can jump on the table if you want to oh mochi actually speaking of sleeping and mochi the next question from diana in michigan is 
what is Mochi's bedtime routine? Is there anything special that Mochi does going to sleep? Anything, anything typical? Um, so Mochi's bedtime routine is basically um, I carry him to bed and I, I, I mean, I carry him to bed all through my pregnancy because people were like, oh, you'll see when you where your belly is super big, you're not going to be able to like until the day of my delivery, like I carry him, but then um, in postpartum, you cannot do it. So it, that was the tragic, the most tragic part. So Peli would carry him and I would hold his paw. And, but now we started doing it again. So we're very happy. And now our bedtime routine is I carry him to bed. And then when I feel yellow or whatever, I put yellow to bed and then I grab Mochi and then I carry him to bed again. So I carry him to bed several times now to make up for the, for those few weeks. Aww. Yeah, there's actually a lot of questions about Mochi and yellow. Um, another one from Sherry in Pennsylvania was, does Mochi watch over your daughter? The next one from Susan in Kansas is, um, is Mochi kid friendly? And I think you've answered that if there's anything you want to add. And also Susan says, I am so excited to receive my signed copy. Um, I've never seen anything other than Mochi being kid friendly. I'm just curious, looking forward to the life signing. Love you, Mochi. Oh. So Mochi yeah, a lot of people are interested in the interaction between. Yeah, Mochi is very kid friendly. Like he's always been, he's generally very, very friendly in general. So he doesn't have a problem with anyone. But for instance, do we, who we love kids? Like Mochi is, if he's a kid, he's not gonna go. But if the kid comes, he's gonna be very happy and he loves the attention. And who is gonna go? Like who, if he, who is, is a kid, he's gonna go say hi. And do we, is like, if he's a kid, he's like, no, no, I don't want anything to do with that. But, but Mochi, like I remember in one pet con, there was a, a baby that was, it's, it was the kid of, of a guy who was a rescue. And, and the baby was like a, a year old or so. And he went straight to Mochi and he hugged Mochi. And Mochi was having, like he was loving it because Mochi actually loved the attention. And kids are, I mean, of course, and um, we've been lucky that kids have been very nice to Mochi. So he's never had uh, any issue with that. But yeah, he's very kid friendly. Perfect. And actually, this parlays into the next question from Jennifer in Lexington, Kentucky. What do you recommend for pet parents who are introducing pets to a new baby? Do you, do you is there something special that you did that really you think made a difference or that you recommend? Definitely. So I'm, of course, no trainer and like I'm no, no prof, not a professional or anything, but my personal advice or what worked for me was spending one on one time with the dog because you know for them um because a lot of people they have the baby and then of course the baby needs all this attention so they they focus on the baby and then they are like no they put all these boundaries to the dog and they yell start yelling at the dog or now the dog doesn't leave, sleep in the same bedroom or whatever which trainers recommend not to have everyone sleep in the same bed bedroom as we do but we have the baby in the bassinet and we, so because I really wanted to uh, sleep with all of them. So the baby lives safely in a bassinet and we're all in the bed. And for me, it was, uh, what I recommend is to spend time with them. Like if you used to walk them, try to keep walking them and try to feed them yourself and not, you know, like, um, so they keep, um, try to keep their um, routine uh, as, closer as it was before as possible at least that's what worked for us perfect I think that's wonderful and speaking of qualities um there's a couple people asking about your favorite um quality in mochi Mia and Carolyn from Missouri of all the lovable things about mochi and pugs in general what is your favorite quality and also what qualities do you love in the cheese and how do they interact? Is there any difference between the two that you see? So favorite quality mochi, favorite quality in the cheese and how do those interact? Um, so I think for mochi, I would lie if I wouldn't say his loyalty because he's so, so, so extremely loyal to only me <laughs> that it breaks my heart and I love that so much. Besides yeah. that, he's loving, hilarious and all these things, but I love that. 
um, for Dewey. What I love about Dewey is that he's like adorable. Like it's his word. Like he's so adorable. He <laughs> loves us so much. He's so cute and funny. Like he's such a big personality in a very small body. And for Hui is that he's he's a natural dog. Like out of the three, Hui is a dog. Mochi and Dewey are a weird, weird characters. I don't know what they are. But Huey is such a classic dog. Like he oh. is very adventurous, you know? He loves um, adventure and playing and he's very active and he's very curious. So I love that he's very adventurous. Very nice. Actually, the next question is uh, related kind of. Caitlin from Kentucky was asking, is there... Is there anything that Mochi does that you don't like? Um, what I am, um, ever since the twenties, ever since the twenties, they spoiled my baby, and now he barks, <laughs> and uh, sometimes yeah. drives me crazy. He did. He didn't used to bark, and now I actually want to um, work on that because he warns me of everything that happens. We did like, thank you, Mochi, but I don't need it. Like, if Peli leaves the room, he barks. If Peli enters the room, he barks. If someone, I don't know, if something happens, he, he's like, he warns me of everything that goes in the house, which I appreciate, but I really don't need. I really don't need, don't I? No. But, yeah. but and anyway. That, yeah, the barking, yeah, I know. That can get annoying sometimes. They get so yappy. I don't know why. I think mine are always with gardeners. Oh, my God. When the gardeners <laughs> come over, it's all over which someone actually kelly from virginia was asking did you ever get mad at mochi for anything like really mad even for like 10 seconds hmm, that's a very good question i mean i bet i have in the past mm, almost eight years but but i'm gonna tell you i'm extremely patient with mochi like it's um Peli and i are very different he's a patient person in general but he gets very annoyed with this too. <laughs> Not very much, but when they, he, she cries or whatever, he, get, he loses his patience. I'm, I'm not a patient person at all, like with anything, like my patience is like this, but with these two, and also we do it, with Hui, Hui gets on my nerves more because he, he, he's always like, he's like, he can put the house on fire, but, um, but I'm very patient. I, I have infinite patience with, patience with them. So now I, I don't get mad. I feel everything they do, I, I find it hilarious. So yeah, I, I am not patient with things in life in general, but with pugs, I'm very patient. I don't know. People think I spoil them and I'm a slacker with them, but I don't, I don't know. I just, I can't get mad at pugs. I'm, I, I find a, a reason to understand them. So exactly, I, I get you. Yeah. Okay, Elvin from North Hollywood, California, which is close to me here, has a question, and it is an Espanol, so I am going to ask, and I may butcher some words. Everybody, excuse me. I will do my best. <laughs> Isabella, you're, you're the best. I love you. All right. El no. Thanks a lot, Elvin, for throwing me a curveball. Okay, here we go. Hola, tengo un pack color negrito, y lo amo. Por él es que me gustó mucho su trabajo con Mochi y quería preguntar si podría hacer más dibujos de Pugs color negrito. Gracias. Um, well, what she asked is that she has a, pla a black pack and she asked if we can do more comics with black packs. And I get this question a lot and that's why I created um, the character of Violet, which is Mochi's friend who's a girl and is a black pack. And I created her especially for this. And I love black packs. People, um, some people know, and it, and it says in the book, spoiler alert, that Mochi was supposed to be a black pack. Right. But um, because our comic is very biographical and we don't see many black packs uh, in the daily life, not so many stories come. Um, show, and so it's hard for me to just for it because it's and when Violet appears, usually it's, uh, it's a, a made up story. But yeah, I'm gonna try, definitely gonna try. You know what? I rescued a pug, a black pug female from Mexico, and she was adopted by a couple who live in Brooklyn. She's beautiful, black pug girl. Her name is Valentina. So maybe we can arrange a 
hug yeah. one day and then you could write a real story. Exactly. All right, I'm gonna get on this. I'm gonna think about this. All right, next question. Ricky from Monrovia, California asks, oh, does Mochi do zoomies? He does. does he, around? does he get the zoomies ever? He does get uh, zoomies sometimes, but honestly, not so often. Like he used to do them more when he was younger. Or if he, for instance, if we go, go to the beach, then he would run, but he's a very laid back pup. He doesn't run much. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it changes with age for sure. Yeah. Um, how many pounds does he weigh? Uh, he weighs around 20. 20 pounds. And how long, this is interesting, how long did it take you to potty train him? For, um, let me see, uh, I, I think a, a few weeks, not much. Uh, he was pretty good uh, at that, unlike the others. Holy <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, she hates um, like she hates if I'm sitting, so she needs movement in this, in her life. But yeah, he was pretty decently quick, and since he was body trained, he's had zero accidents. Like in his life, he has he's accident free. Yeah. But but yeah, we, I thought I was very great at training. And then I got the twinchies because I was like, oh my God, I'm such a great trainer because uh, look at my dog. But uh, no, the twinchies have accidents. So yeah, it's, it was very good at it. Um, yeah, I trust me. My pug, my first pug, Balbina, was amazing. And I was like, oh my God, pugs are so smart. They're so good. She's never had an accident. And then I discovered that that is not the case with all the puggies. Exactly. All uh, right, so Jamie from Minnesota uh, writes this. First of all, congratulations on the human puppy. I have two pugs and I love the accuracy and personality that you bring into your drawings. I'm curious what attracted you to being owned by a pug? And you know what? There's actually a bunch of questions that ask what it was about a pug that attracted you. And I know the book starts with a very cute story. Like you mentioned, you wanted to go in for the black bug and then you, you fell in love with Mochi was the one. Um, but what is it about pugs? Like before, before, did you have a pug ever? Was Mochi your first pug? And what was it that drew you to them? So yeah, Mochi was my first pug. Um, I always loved dogs and animals in general, but uh, I didn't know pugs even existed. And then- um, yeah, a uh, um, friend of my parents um, had a pug named Klein, and I met her once, and I was like, "Like, what is this? Like, this is amazing." She was so so cute and funny, and like my my mind exploded like with her. She was so amazing that I I was obsessed after that. I was like, "What? What is this?" And then, yeah, it was pugs. Pugs were my love ever since. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Okay. You know what? You rock her and I'll keep yapping here. Um, I totally agree. When I first saw my, my first pug, I was like, what is this? Like, this is not a dog. It has no snout. It's flat. It's so cute. I was like, is this like a monkey slash dog? Oh my God. I just thought they were so adorable. So I hear you on that. Okay. So the next, the next is actually not really a question. It's more of a comment from Sophie in France, in France, oh, all the way from Europe. I am totally a fan of your Mochi comics. I have two pugs that I totally recognize in all the situations that you draw. I love it so much. Thank you for that. I also follow the actions of the pug queen who I admire and thank for all her commitments. Oh, that's so sweet. That's thank so you, sweet. Sophie from France. It's very nice. And you know what? One of the things that I've noticed in the book, like I mentioned earlier, is how much we relate to what you draw. It's just so funny. It's like the things that pugs have in common. I think any pug parent is going to read the book and is going to totally relate and love it and crack up because you're going to see your own pugs in this. And I think that's what makes such a great pug community. That's why we all like each other and we can make jokes and we can laugh about all the silly things that pug do. Yeah, that was actually the happy accident about this comic because um my 
my goal was just to draw a comic about Mochi. Like I didn't think farther than that, but then what I loved is that people related to it and they saw themselves in it. And that's what created this actual community that the other day I, I was talking to Peli and we don't get many haters, like honestly, people are being amazing. But every, every time someone said something slightly mean, there's so many comments of people like um, defending us. And I think that is so sweet because people, um, I don't know, it's like we, we create like a very big family that we love of pack yeah. lovers. I agree. I, I Anytime there's someone that says something mean on my post, I don't even have to reply because so many people exactly. have my back and the Pug Queen Army is just incredible. And I know oh, I'm yeah, really love it. for our community. Oh, this is a great question. I'm curious too. Eileen from Florida wants to know, how old were you when you drew your first mochi? Uh, I was 27. 27. Because um, it's when I got mochi. And yeah, I actually the first comic, uh, it's yeah, it's uh, it's a the first time I draw it, it's a comic that says, oh, I, I just got my my pack, he's super cute, and it the comic is hideous. Like it's the the drawing of Moti has been evolving through the years. And if you see the first comics, they're like, oh my god, they're so so ugly. But that's the beauty of art, <laughs> it improves. <laughs> I just love the mochi. I don't know how you came up. It's just the cutest. I mean, it's just Thank such you. a recognizable, just so adorable. I can't even talk about it. Total mochi. All right. Oh my God. The next question is from my homeland where I was born from Poland. Oh, and wow. Krakow, the city in Poland, Krakow, where I was born. That's so cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So Karolina, Karolina from Krakow, Poland is saying, Gemma and mochi, I love you guys. Every day I wait for your comics and stories. How are the boys behaving with Yellow being around? Do they wake her up when they play? Uh, thankfully, no. Uh, and she doesn't wake up when they bark, which is amazing. Yeah, they said because uh, she used to hear them through the, through the boom, boom. So yeah, so far so good. They, they are curious, like Hui is very curious of her. The other two don't care about her too much, but but yeah, so far um, it's been very peaceful. That's great that she doesn't wake up to the barking. Yeah, that's amazing because- I wake up to the barking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. All right, awesome. Okay, um, Kathy from Maryland um, is asking, hi Gemma, I love and appreciate your living with Mochi Comics so much. Pugs lend themselves so well to humor and silly situations. My daughter has a six-year-old pug and I used to as well. They bring us so much love. My question is, are pugs as popular and adored in Spain as they are in the United States? Um, I think so. I mean, maybe they are not as popular. I mean, you don't see so many pugs in the streets, maybe, but, but yeah, people love pugs. I mean, who wouldn't love pugs? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I don't think I ever saw a pug in Poland when I was growing up. It wasn't uh, when I visited recently, I saw them. So I, I think they're just not as common. Mm -hmm. All right. Next question. I love Danielle in South Australia. I love seeing Mochi's evilness in the comics. Does he have any evil side in real life? On the rare occasion my boy gets told off by my hubby, he will deliberately destroy something like a shoe. Does Mochi do anything naughty? I just took a photo because I'm going to post it later. Mochi is looking so cute, sleeping on, sleeping on the books. So, <laughs> um, no, uh, that's actually, we with Peli, we have this, um, every time Peli does something and I mock him for it, making Mochi's voice. So, like, we have all these a uh, story that Mochi is very evil, but actually in real life, he's very good. He's, he's an angel. However, he is, um, with Peli, he is a little bit, I mean, for instance, if Peli wants to walk at him, he has to literally leave him and take him. Like, otherwise, <laughs> Mochi is gonna be like, eh, no, like, you're not the boss of me. But, but yeah, no, he's not evil at all. He's very sweet. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't think so. All right, ooh. Um, Emilia from Costa Rica 
I uh, wants to know, hi Gemma, I would like to know if you have ever cried happy tears, like tears of joy after finishing a comic or while creating it. Is there one that you remember being really meaningful and, or maybe difficult that just made you cry with relief when you were done? Definitely, I can think of a couple. Okay, sorry, it's gonna be breakfast. Wait, no Mochi, don't put it. Mochi, you know. <laughs> but I came in prepared in case. I think Kelly is arriving. Okay. Uh, Happy is finally home. Yes. Yes. So, um, honestly, yeah, I think a couple. Um, I really like uh, one that is um, that is uh, actually three. One that is uh, that says we're very happy when we're together, which is because every time with Mochi, like I. We're very happy. But then recently I made one that was very happy for me that I'm driving with Mochi and I and, and it's about he coming always with me without even knowing where we're going, which I love that about Mochi. He's always like, yeah, he, he doesn't need to know where we're going. Like as long as we're together, he's fine. So that one is a, one that I really love. And last one is a sad one. But when Mochi had had to have a procedure, um, hold on, Feli's here. Feli, please take the baby. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, she's been amazing though. Like shout out to Miss Yellow because she only wanted to get some camera attention. Mochi with his side. Right. Listen, yeah. to get, she had to get in there. Yes, it's been I, because I text him like SOS, come here, like I'm like freaking up. So yeah, now he's gracefully dragging her from under the table and he's going to take her. Thank you for coming for the ending, Sally. Very nice to have yeah. you. <laughs> I don't know if he hear you, but so and the last the the sad comic is one that Mochi had to uh, spend a night in the hospital, and he had to have anesthesia. It wasn't um it wasn't something like life threatening or 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 nothing like it it's it wasn't about that. But it was it has its danger, and also we had to spend a night apart because of the COVID. I couldn't visit or anything. And it was a lot, you know, like I, I was very scared for anesthesia and I, Mochi hasn't even had any dental because I'm terrified of anesthesia. He had to have the procedure and I was honestly nervous wreck. Like I cried for weeks before and for weeks after, like I was a nervous wreck. And the comic is about the time when he, we were apart, it was only half of me and I, and I realized um, I'm not getting emotional, <laughs> but I realized that um, he is my better half, you know, like it's, he's part of me, you know, like I, when, when we were apart, I felt like I wasn't full, you know, like part of me was missing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I, and this comic, like, yeah, I definitely cry during that time, during the comic, and I cry a lot. You're gonna I make a lot of emoji, like, honestly, I cry so much, like, I, I'm an emotional me too. person. <laughs> But with Mochi, like I cry of love so often. I cry like with I, I can. Like with Mochi, I, I just can't. I, I just can. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I cry a lot too. I'm sure everybody knows that, like, oh yeah, Puckley, she's a mess. Um, but that's about yeah, you, you know, cry. that's how it is with pugs. The bonds are so tight and so real that they make us really emotional. Yeah. Um, Kyla, from, uh, Kyla and Gonzo from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Hi, Canadians. I know them. Uh, <laughs> oh, she wants to know what your favorite scenarios are to draw. What is there something that you're like, okay, I'm, I'm looking forward to drawing this. Mm, honestly, I love when comics are very simple, you know, because so, I have so many ideas that that they require a 10 panel story, which I love from time to time, but I love when they are very, very simple and they are, the concept is like neat, you know, simple. Like that's why I love that we're very happy when we're together because we're just walking in the park and we say this and that's it. And that's the full story. So when these things happen, I'm like, oh, love it. You know, it's simple. It's, it's 
emotional for me at least and or it's very funny or it's something like I like when it's very specific which not all the comics are and they don't have to be but that's my those are my favorite perfect makes sense all right, Brandon from Iowa actually asked a question which I don't think you should answer. I think he should just find out in the book. The question is, how did Mochi come into your life? And you I'm have to the book. you have to read the book because it's yeah. one of the first stories and it's super cute. And okay, two part question. The second part though is, did you know much about the pugs at the time? Like, and did you know much about them? You, you I mean, pretty much said that you, you you just saw one pug before that, right? Yeah, I saw one pug, but I did a lot of research because I was obsessed with pugs. So I <laughs> spent my days looking at pugs online and like I knew all about the breathing problems and the eye problems and all these things. But even with that, I think that when I see photos of Mochi when he was a puppy, like I could see him panting and I'm like, oh, like I didn't know how bad it was, you know, at that time. And I mean, it's something that I learned through the years. And now, for instance, I don't get mochi panting. Like the second it's getting a little bit hot, it's like, okay, get inside, a AC, you know, like all these things. And that's why he's, look at him, he's so healthy. But, but yeah, I, I know a little and I learned a lot, I think. But yeah, I yes, really recommend I people before getting a pack to do your research. It's not an easy breed. And it's, a, it's easy uh, for some things. Like for instance, I think chihuahuas are harder because they are untrainable, at least by me. <laughs> but I mean, I, I'm going to get so many people saying like, I have a chihuahua and it's amazing. Okay, lucky for you. It's not <laughs> my case, you know. <laughs> but so packs are amazing for some things, but they do require a lot of time an effort and if you don't have this time you don't, don't get any dog of course but packs like if you're gonna leave a pack alone a lot of hours a day he's gonna be so miserable you know like he's not gonna be i don't know whatever people do whatever they think they need to do but yeah just kidding. Pugs are very i completely agree they're so needy they're just needy mm -hmm. emotionally yeah. like little sponges they need you they follow you they want to be with you it's like you're the whole world so yes very needy. All right. Renee from Pennsylvania has a nice comment for you. She says, thank you so much for your creative way to bring all of our pugs to life. You are truly talented. And I really agree with her because your mo mochi cartoons bring all of our pugs to life. You know, that's hence the relatability. That's why I think so many people fall in love with mochi and you and your work. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. More about mochi. Favorite thing about mochi. Favorite habits. Do you take mochi to any pug groups to socialize? Diane from Washington is asking. Do you guys have any pug groups in a city or any meetups or, or dates? I'm sure you're so busy now with having the baby. But is there anything like that over there in New I'm York? Mochi. Oh, come say hi. So, yes. In New York, there's... Um, New York pack meetup with 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 they meet once a month. We don't go once a month, but we've gone uh, several times and we love it. And of course, packs take over. Uh, <laughs> packs take Philly. Packs take Boston. Packs take it's um and we meet like a lot of packs in a different city. And of course, with COVID, it was canceled. But I can't wait, can't wait for it to like. Um, resume because it's I mean there's nothing I love more than a good pack meetup we also did a, a pack and for Mochi's birthday in Barcelona we did a pack party a pack pool party and there were a lot of packs I don't know how many they were but they were a lot did you remember Mochi so yeah I love pack meetups and the funniest thing about pack meetups is that one there's no fights ever because packs don't fight like they are all mm -hmm. chilling but the funniest thing to me is that they are like, each pack is with his parents, you know? Like they are with their mom or their dad or whoever, and they just are happy, like not being even social, you know? Like they're just there for the people. But yeah, I feel like you're walking and you don't know what to do. So yeah, we love socializing. Wonderful. Yes, we love pug meetups. They're always so much fun. Happy pugs running around. Oh, we have like, oh, from Ines from Portugal. Mm -hmm. 
wants to know um, if you ever considered getting a Frenchie. She says that her French Bulldog resembles Mochi a lot. What you do you think about Frenchies? I love Frenchies. However, I'm a pack person because Frenchies and packs are very similar, but Frenchies lack something that I need from a pack, which is uh, the fluffiness, you know, like Frenchies are more muscular. Mochi has mu muscles uh, behind the <laughs> fat, underneath the fat, but- And there are rolls, there are some muscles there. I mean, I love Frenchies maybe almost as much, but I love, I like packs more. Sorry for all my Frenchies because I love Frenchies, you know, like I, me like a good Frenchie, but yeah. I hear you. Uh, nothing can compare to a pack in my humble opinion, unbiased opinion. Bias, totally biased, which is yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> fine. Um, Christian from New York um, was asking if you are familiar with Humphrey the Pug um, and his cartoon illustrations. What do you think about Humphrey? I like them. I love Humphrey and I also like Ink Pug, which they are amazing. Yeah. But I don't follow them because I don't want to accidentally steal ideas. So I never, like, I, if they come up from time to time and I like them, I honestly like them. However, I try not to see them because I, I know that subconsciously they're going to get into, into my mind and I'm going to, I don't want to copy anyone, you know? So I try not to see them. Yeah, some, someone said, oh, Impact has a book. Did you, do you have it? Like, I don't have it. I bet it's amazing because I love their work, but I just don't want to see it. Because I, I don't want to uh, accidentally uh, copy anyone. Yeah, absolutely. Even if you don't intend to, sometimes you're subconsciously influenced and then you're like, oh, wait, I saw that. Yeah, that's very exactly. cool. Very interesting uh, answer. And finally, we have our last question. Oh. What is the silliest thing that Mochi does to get your attention? What is the silliest and what is, what is the cutest? Is there something that you're just like, oh, man, I can't. This is like you just melt. For me, the curious is that he stares at me in a very intense, meaningful way. Because it's it's just that he we we have a great connection, and and he just like it, he looks at me like he's communicating like what he needs, and I, I just I just love it. I just that's my favorite. It's not and the you, super. You I mean, connect. exactly. It's not. I mean, I know there are dogs that do like this and they do these cute things. Mochi doesn't do that, but I just love that he stares at me. And honestly, there's one comic that is coming up about something very bad I did as a mom, and I'm very ashamed, but I'm going to say it because it happened. I sent them to bed without dinner once because I forgot. I literally forgot. Like, literally forgot. Absolutely. And in the middle of the night, I woke up and like, oh my God, Mochi's acting funny. Like, I, I, I noticed he was acting funny, like something's happening. And I took him outside and, and I and I gave him a snack. I gave all of them a snack, thankfully, thankfully. And then I remember that I didn't feed them. I know it's, I'm horrible, but yeah. but yeah. It, it's, pug, it's like, oh my God, she doesn't. Know, like, I felt so horrible that after <laughs> that, it's like every time maybe I'm with yellow and feeling like, oh, do I feed them? Like, no, 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 I feed them, I feed them, you know, like I, I want to, like for the rest of their life, I'm going to be like in depth with them. But, but saying that, that it's like Mochi stares at me like, okay, I know something's up, you know, I know something happens. And yeah, because he's, he's very good at catching my attention. I think that pugs do that a lot. You know, oftentimes I know something's wrong with a pug because they sit and stare at me like intently. And I'm like, why yeah. are you staring? And then like, they're trying to communicate. I, I feel that too. They're very intuitive little, little creatures. Yeah. All right, my love. Well, we've come to an end of the questioning. Um, and thank you so much for the amazing book and for sharing your talents and your love for pugs with all of us. We also appreciate it. It's like a little ray of sunshine and pug joy every day i'm not reading through all of it at once i like to savor it so i i read a few and then i take a break and i use my little signed mochi card as my bookmark from where i stop um is there anything you want to say in the end to your fans to the people who have purchased the book is there anything final thoughts definitely first of all thank you so so much for doing it you're amazing 
every time we do these kind of chats. I love it. Like I love the work you do. I'm so, so grateful that you're for your work. Honestly, I send you a lot of people like, oh, help us uh, with this pack in China. And I'm like, the pack queen. Yeah, I have no, I don't know anything about that. But um, so you're doing amazing. And I really, I really honestly couldn't appreciate you more. Thank you so much for doing this. You're being so, so much fun. And you even spoken Spanish. Uh, that was amazing. So yeah. I'm oh, really not so bad. <laughs> yeah, no, you did amazing. Okay. And I wasn't expecting that. You did really amazing. <laughs> so thank you. And also, um, the, oh, thank you to everyone. Sorry about the yellow situation. She just woke up the second before I was, I had to go live. Diaper explosion. <laughs> she was more awake than ever. I didn't know what to do. So it's, I was like, okay, I guess she's coming to the life. And then that life. So sorry about that. Thank you. Sorry. Not everyone is as professional as this baby. <laughs> and so just the book. Um, it's honestly, it's a very funny book. And you guys know that um, you can buy it um, signed even after this live video. So uh, the link is in our bio and you can find it and uh, we're not going to remove it. So you, it's always there and we're, you're going to get it. It's actually signed. It's not a digital thing. It's our handwriting and, and I hope you guys like it. It's very special to us. It's a compilation of our favorite comics and then it has new content and then it has a chapter all about Ben with new comics as well. And it has stickers and it's very amazing. So I hope you guys like it. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you to Isabella. And we hope to see you guys in real life soon when all this nightmare is over. I know, I can't wait to see you guys again. Remember when I saw you and I met you in LA and I tried to yes. steal Mochi? <laughs> yes, we remember, but she has so many pups. Oh, she's like, back off, pug queen. I'm staying with my mama. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's so cute. All right. Mucho besitos. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.